Oh, it's been such a pleasure to be here today and to hear everyone else um, presenting. It's been so interesting um, and, and thank you for having me. I hope I'm not being um, too repetitive in what I have to say, but yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the Institute um, and, and what we're doing in open access. Um, before I continue, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where we are meeting today, the Pambalong clan of the Awabakal people. I would like to acknowledge the lands, the traditional custodians of the lands within the university's footprint, the Awabakal, Verapai, Darkenyang, Waramai, Wanarua, and the Aura Nations, and their continuing connection to country. I would also like to acknowledge the lands on which others are joining us online today. I recognize country itself, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. I would also like to extend my recognition and respect to all First Nations people present today, always was, always will be. I was a little bit nervous um, when I asked to put this together and present. And then I was shared uh, the open access uh, blog by Richard White, who's the chair of open access 2023 community over commercialization. And I was so inspired after reading it. Um, research is defined as the creation of new knowledge and or the use of existing knowledge in a new and creative way. So as to generate new concepts methodologies and understandings, which I'm sure you are all very familiar with. <laughs> it is by nature meant to improve the lives of the people it is for and about. It was so inspiring to see it put so simply in Richard's words, if we only make research available to the people and the communities is it, it is for and about in a way that requires payment, are we doing the research for us or for them? As I said, this really resonated with me personally and with what we're doing at the Institute for Regional Futures. Um, so I'll try not to go over um, the intro again, but um, we're celebrating our one year anniversary just last um, month. We're, we're really babies. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, yeah, we're babies in everything that we're doing um, and that includes our journey with open access, commercialization and impact. Um, so yeah, we partner with government industry community to provide people service research, evidence and strategy <laughs> to inform policy and to support decisions for the future of the regions. Basically, to put it really simply, we operate sort of like a consultancy um, and our work is driven by the needs of our partners. Now, the word consultancy might sound a little bit counterintuitive to open access, um, but bear with me. Our team are generalist researchers. Uh, and we actually collaborate across the university to provide that depth in the interdisciplinary research for our partners. Through all of our work, we are focused on prosperous regions, informed decision makers, mm -hmm. and empowered communities. As I said, we're babies, um, but we're leveraging a range of mechanisms to support open access uh, to all of our research and to drive impact. One of these mechanisms is the Hunter Insight Series. The Hunter Insight Series brings together research from the Hunter Research Foundation Centre, which some of you may be familiar with. There's a wealth of data there that we are the custodians for, um, and we bring our new research that we're doing um, uh, together. We use these events to delve into critical issues that are facing our region and to highlight key considerations for decision makers, as well as the challenges and opportunities on the road ahead. The key thing about these events is that they are always free and they are always open to the public. The research and recommendations are made available after the event um, and we seek to disseminate even further via different forums. For example, the Geography of Jobs event, which was back in May, um, the team developed an abstract from the presentation and they were recently um, presenting that just last week at the National Planning Institute Australia conference. Another mechanism is NOVA. <laughs> um, we were introduced to NOVA in July. We were seeking a permanent place to store and share our outputs from the Institute, including those from the Hunter Insight series. Um, and as we all know, large, large organizations change all the time. And with that, you know, the website changes and your name changes, and then suddenly you can't find any of the things that you've published online anymore. 
So we were really hesitant to just have them available on our website, which they are, but we were like, oh, you know, we could lose that pretty easily. Um, so Nova was a great um, solution for us and thank you so much to the team. Um, with great support from the, from the library, we have since established a collection in Nova for the Institute. We've also been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to support other fellow researchers to engage with Nova um, and to share their important work uh, through this site and the SDG report there in the middle is an example of that. I want to talk briefly a little bit more about this report here um, as it's one that we're really, really proud of uh, and I think is a key example of how uh, of why open access is important and when it works really well. Developed in partnership with the Greater Cities Commission and the Wallatooka Institute here at the university, the partnering with First Nations communities in city and regional planning was recently recognised by the NTRO, Non-Traditional Research Output Committee. NTROs, as you may or may not be aware, play an important role in advancing knowledge and demonstrating the impact of the university in new ways and are included in the Excellence in Research Australia assessment of universities which inform global rankings and contribute to funding. With endorsement from the Greater Cities Commission, the team has made the full text report available on NOVA. To enable reciprocity and mutual learning, the team are employing a number of strategies to ensure that the recommendations of the report are communicated with First Nations communities locally and internationally. NOVA is one of these mechanisms and further dissemination and promotion of this research is ongoing. In the few months that the report has been available, over a thousand people have viewed it and has had over 60 downloads. These numbers are good, but even better than that is that open access enables greater opportunity for these recommendations and research to be accessed and implemented. So some of the challenges and learnings in the few months, um, uh, all of our work at the Institute, or well, apart from the Hemster Insight series, is commissioned under contract. So we have to seek permission from our partners to share. We have always taken the opportunity to educate our partners as to the importance of open access, and most of the time they're really supportive and happy for us to, um, to publish it. It does greatly limit our ability to demonstrate impact when our work is not able to be made publicly or full text um, available, especially in cases where it's informing policy, planning or other research. But of course, that's just the way it is sometimes. Some things are too confidential. Intellectual property and Indigenous cultural and intellectual property should not be seen as blockers, but it is really important to address these early on and to do it right. Everyone knows systems can be a little bit tricky, but don't let the confusion hold you back. Reach out to the team, attend a session, um, and awareness internally within the university I know is still developing. So events like this are really great, well done, um, and we hope that more will join us on the journey of open access. For the benefits, I'll wrap up. Um, I've probably gone over time and I know that we've all been sitting down for a while. I just wanna say that the benefits, um, in my experience, greatly outweigh any challenges. Open access is mutually beneficial. It broadens your audience and it works in real time. And I didn't steal those words off Mark, I swear. <laughs> um, I truly believe that it is our duty to continue to engage with ways to make research open access, to ensure that the learnings are shared with our communities, the people the research is for and about, to enable positive change for our future. Thanks.